Hey, I'm Lou Brutus. Ollie Sykes of Bring Me the Horizon is my guest. How are you holding up through things? I'm good, mate. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, first, if we can delve a bit into personal stuff, is uh, family okay? Is the rest of the band okay? Everybody is on a fairly even keel, I hope? Yeah, everyone's as good as can be expected at the moment. Things are getting a little crazy back over here in the UK, but um, everyone's happy. I mean, what's a, a typical day like you? Are you getting out much at all, or are you cooped up for most of the time? Um, well, I mean, this record has been taking up most of my life um, for the last, well, good five or six months. Um, so I've just kind of come out of the other side, to be honest. And like, um, I mean, just catching up with press and we've just done a music video for Teardrops, which I directed and edited and everything. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going away um, to Brazil on Wednesday and that's when I'm going to be able to get some, um, some rest and some relaxation. Before we dive into uh, specifics for folks who are not familiar, can you give a sort of an overview of how the uh, the music uh, has rolled out and will continue to roll out? I think you guys have had a uh, a very interesting plan going on here. Yeah, so I mean, with this post-human um, project that we've been doing, it's going to be four EPs of. And when I say EPs, they're more just like records that don't have any definitive track length you know like um for instance so our horrors nine tracks which is almost like an album really but mm. it's um you know the main reason we're doing this is to break free of kind of like the restrictions an album has of kind of some like the creative blocks and you know um just it the format just doesn't feel it feels like it's getting outdated now for it from my perspective in terms of like you know, people consume music so fast these days. It's like they listen to an album, like, that's great, what's next? And they've got the whole fucking, you know, <laughs> the whole music library of the universe at their fingertips. It's just people just consume music so much faster now. And, for, you know, when we wrote Ammo, which I mean, a, a record I'm incredibly proud of, but it took us, like, from start to finish, it took us a year. And actually, a year of our lives doing one thing. And it's just, you know, it, you have to push yourselves, you know, the, I, even the greatest records out there, there's always two or, There's always two songs, at least, that are like, don't have the same energy and passion as the rest of it. And, you know, we found ourselves having to write songs that we didn't need to write, that no one needed to hear and stuff. And, you know, I, I want, there was a bunch of reasons, but, you know, I just wanted to get out of this mindset of, like, we have to tour for two years then go and write an album for a year, put that out, and then no one hears any more music from us for another two years. You know, I wanted to be able to be more reactive and put out music when we felt inspired and, and just do something, shake it up a little bit, you know. We've been doing the same thing for like 15 years, so it was time for a change. And certainly that is not unprecedented. Uh, anybody who's a bit of a, a music historian can look back at how the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or the Who used to uh, roll out stuff in the 60s. There would be a single and they'd ride the single and then there'd be another single and then maybe an EP and, and albums were considered, uh, you know, secondary to, uh, to all that. For sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just time to like start experimenting. I think, I think, Everything's changed over the last five years, really, with it going all from to streaming and everything else. I think it just it's just time to start, you know, playing around with the format and, and seeing what works. And, you know, I'm not saying we'll never do an album again, but it's definitely a lot more exciting just to be, you know, th this music we've been doing, we've been writing it and then a month later it comes out. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so exciting to, to still have that energy of when you've just wrote it and just finished recording. It's like, right, people can actually hear this in like a couple of weeks, not in like six months. So it's definitely exciting. It, it makes, you know, this year with our music, it's felt like every song is like an event. Like it's like, maybe that's because of lockdown and people are like desperate for new entertainment, but it's just, you know, it's, it's nice to have that kind of feel where it's not just like, all right, here's a single, here's a single, here's an album. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and then, the excitement's gone it's like each 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 thing we drop is like feels like a, a whole event 
And uh, that immediacy, I think, really carries over uh, very well, in particular to teardrops. Uh, if you would be so kind, uh, background on the song itself, and then uh, let's talk about the video, which you have been uh, eyeball deep in uh, its creation. Um, yeah, it's teardrops is probably my favorite song off the record in terms of like, I just feel like it's such a bring me the rising song, like in its purest form. It's like, it represents what our band's all about. You know, it's heavy, but it's got that emotion that really connects. And, you know, I think um, I'm really excited for people to hear it. Lyrically, it's very much about, it's very much about kind of the reaction that, we're seeing in, in young people and ourselves to like almost becoming numb to to this to the state of the world almost you know being kind of pulverized again in the game with awful traumatizing news that we're starting to lose our perspective on how to how to process it do you know what i mean and that's what where the lyric comes you know uh, i'm running out of teardrops i'll let it hurt till it stops it's like I think we're getting so overwhelmed with just bad news on a daily basis that it's it's becoming hard to feel like, you know, it's becoming even hard to know how we should feel about things. And that's very dangerous because I think it's, it's blurring the lines on when we should take action or when we should stand back or, you know, what to do at all. And I think, you know, I, I really feel for, for the younger generation of these days growing up in, a, in you know, growing up in the, the age of just technology addiction and and you know it just being the norm to wake up in the morning the first thing you do is check your phone first thing you do is just get bombarded by awful news of genocides and tragedies and terrorist attacks and you know viruses and all this shit it's just it's just a lot you know i mean i feel it and i'm you know i'm a 30 something year old man so i think for like the younger generation i just think we don't even know we can't even begin to, I guess, even really understand how much of an impact this is going to have on people's brains. And um, so, yeah, the song is very much dealing with 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 what's happening in the world today on an emotional level and how how we process it and how you know our brains are actually starting to struggle to process it. I want to come back and talk about the video specifically, but first, how helpful to it. Uh, how helpful is it to you personally to be able to take all of this horrible shit and turn it into music and turn it into art? Do you find it uh, uh, therapeutic? Oh, yeah, 110 percent, man. It's, you know, it saves me, to be honest. Uh, it's, you know, it's I've, I've got more into writing journals and, you know, I'm starting to write things that I'm grateful for and start to process through, things through words. But like a lot of other people, you know, if someone just says to you, like, if you're upset about something, write it down or do this, you're like, I thought that I'm not going to do that. Who am I going to write it for? You know, we're very much like, why that way? That's not going to help us, whatever. So the fact that I, it's my job to do that, I'm very lucky because it, I, it is such a powerful thing to write down stuff and to process stuff and to just get it out of your fucking head and into the world. It just makes these problems that are this big, you know, this big. And it's just so important. And I think where other people might not want to write it down, they can listen to my words and they can get that same catharsis through the words. And, you know, I think that's so important. That's why we wanted to write this record. That's why we wanted to put something out in the middle of the pandemic. It's like our fans and people need music more than ever. And, you know, no one's talking about all this on an emotional level. It's just always politics. It's always right and left. It's always just bullshit. No one's actually talking about the damage it has to us. No one's really sitting down and going, you know, no one wants to talk about it. Everyone wants to just try and escape. And, you know, that's like why songs like Parasite, even Teardrops became so important. Like, if I don't sing about these songs, who else is going to? Uh, if you would, tell me about putting together the Teardrops video. Um, so, yeah, we did, I've just... I've just literally finished editing this morning um, the video for Teardrops. Um, it was a lot of fun, actually. Um, I mean, even though the video is very dark, um, yeah. it's um, it's basically you know 
I mean, when we write, when we write our songs, a lot of the time when I'm even writing the lyrics, like I'm very visual in terms of like I see something, what the words mean, all this stuff, and you know, I just thought for this video, I I don't want it to be anything too clever. I just want it to be, I just want to try and do a visual rep representation of the way I feel or the way this, you know, the subject matter is making me feel like what depression feels like, you know what I mean? So it's, um, the first day we, of shooting was all in an underwater tank. Um, and basically it's kind of meant to be symbolic of how I feel in my head, like trapped, you know, underwater and, you know, struggling to breathe and, and, and feeling very um, claustrophobic. Throughout this project, you have worked with uh, uh you brought in some great people uh in the closing moments let's talk about amy lee who is uh uh first not only an incredible vocalist she's a a, a super smart and interesting woman tell me about bringing her in for a tune yeah so the story's kind of funny for what how this came about um on our last album we have a song called malice blues and we took a little bit too much influence <laughs> from one of their songs <laughs> um, in one of the vocal melodies, yeah, uh, which which ended up in their managers contacting ours, and not not like a lawsuit. I don't know how to say it. Basically, just like had to come to an agreement of like, you know, of um, paying some money and stuff like that. But the managers mentioned that Amy Amy was a you know a fan of the band and would, you know would love to work together. And um, so we all so we kind of always knew this was on the cards. And when we started writing this um, the track. Um, it just became like we're like because the idea of the song is very much about like it sounds like it's kind of about a, an abusive relationship between a man and a woman um, but the real like the theme of the whole song is about like the relationship mankind has with the planet and you know which is obviously like quite an abusive relationship um, and so you know I knew I wanted like a, a woman to represent like Mother Earth, and then I would represent mankind. Um, so, just felt so perfect to get Amy Lee on for that. Like, she just got her voice is just incredible, um, and the song was taking a very like Celticy operatic vocally like vibe, which we're just like, oh, if we get her on this, it'll be so perfect. Um, so, luckily, she she was really into the song and and did it. Um, yeah, and I think it turned out great. Well, Ollie, very good to talk to you. Uh, have a great time down in Brazil. Stay well, safe travels, and hopefully I'll see you sooner rather than later in the flesh. For sure, man. Nice one. Good to see you again. 